Yes, the title of my uh, presentation is uh, Being at Home with Nafisi's Work. I hope to uh, tell you what it means um, by the end of the presentation. Um, thank you, uh, Rebecca and uh, Danny, for the invitation, for making possible for us together to celebrate Hamid's career and legacy. Um, um, I modified my talk last night uh, after you know we went out um, uh, to some extent to echo uh, some of the points made in the video I shared with you yesterday because for folks sitting in the back you know you may not have been able to read the subtitles from a distance so um, so I'm, uh, I'm gonna proofread it as I read it to you um, <laughs> um, so when I was asked to give a title for my talk I asked myself, what's the one word that Hamid's work invokes for me? And upon reflection, it, I thought it was easy because it came naturally. I concluded it was the word home. Um, with all of its simplicity, complexity, and the affectively, affectively charged character. Um, here, you know, home is uh, the house where I grew up. Home as in where one makes oneself at home, and home as in my homeland, which I share with Hamid. Um, uh, Hamid is from Esfahan, I'm from Shiraz, it's about 216 miles south of Hamid's uh, birthplace. So home, house, home, homeland. Um, all three have been in dispute and destabilized. Hamid said that about you know, 25 years ago. And I think it's becoming even more uh, true since. Um, so that invocation is not simply due to Hamid's stature as the foremost authority on Iranian cinema uh, of my homeland and <clears throat> its accented varieties. Rather, it is, I believe, due to his work on the relationship between media and home, homeland, making home with media, the displaced, the dispossessed of the place. Homeless, homelessness, leaving home, home in motion, the impossibility of going home, the longing to return home. As an immigrant, I can't help but just see it that way. Um, now for an academic point of departure, I could talk about my disciplinary affiliation or departmental home, um, that of media studies and communication, especially in its international and global dimensions. Um, for example, I could go on a long, I have a long list of, you know, say hybridity. Um, Marwan Crady is here, you know, was influenced by Hamid's work greatly. Diasporic media, ethnic media, transnational, global, and exilic media production and consumption. Um, I could, for example, explain how I teach uh, big chunks of his social history of Iranian cinema as an empirical and theoretically rich response to Daniel Lerner's The Passing of Traditional Society and his modernization theory. Um, in that talk, if I were to give that, I would argue that identifying Hamid's work as a film scholar is reductive uh, as his work uh, covers a wide range of scholarly preoccupations and theoretical and empirical domains, temporalities, and geographies. I've done that elsewhere. Um, uh, for example, in a special issue of Iran Namag, uh, that was on Hamid's work. Um, by establishing connections among his various scholarly works, beyond his monumental four-volume uh, social history of Iranian cinema, I have tried to show that his scholarship is best located at the intersection of three specific areas of cultural studies, post-colonial theory, and media theory. The connection between these three areas is tied to Hamid's conceptualization and, and problematizations of borders and belonging, politics of otherness and othering, states of liminality, and the general relationship between culture and power, and we might add geopolitics. Um, I have argued that his, his work is quintessential transdisciplinary, interdisciplinary, 
and um, um, basically arguing you know, or suggesting that that reflects his cosm cosmopolitan sensibility and upbringing. Um, in the video we saw last night, Tahomi Nejad, a respected you know, um, documentary filmmaker and writer in Iran, said in Farsi and was translated, um, he basically said one of the things that he said was um, um, Nafisi had to leave home, had to leave, had to leave Iran to find his Iranianness, uh, or that his Iranianness can only be understood in a global or cosmopolitan framework. That was his uh, uh, argument. However, I don't think making that kind of presentation is a good use of my time um, for this occasion and for this audience anyway. Um, instead, I would like to share some thoughts about the place Hamid occupies, and Hamid and his work occupy back home in Iran, um, and what his work has meant to me in relation to my house and my home, homeland. Um, so I travel to Iran frequently. Um, my observations are, you know, uh, based on basically you know, 25 years of going back and forth, and I was there uh, uh, twice last year. And uh, in preparation for making that film uh, that you saw last night, um, I revisited uh, you know, several colleagues. I talked to them on the phone. Um, so uh, it's based on these years of you know uh, being around, hearing about you know Hamid and Hamid's work back home. Um, um, I'll start with um, a quote. Um, and I'll hope to come back to and to make, you know, explain why. In a thousand plateaus, the Luz and Guattari say the following: A child in the dark, gripped with fear, comforts himself by singing under his breath. He walks and halts to his song. Lost, he takes shelter, or orients himself with his little song as best he can. The song is like a rough sketch of a calming and stabilizing calm and stable center in the heart of chaos. I'll come back to this at the end. So this is a form, this is a warm and fuzzy, you know, evocation of home. You know, good times. Tadik, you know, if you recall, you know, if you're from Iran. Um, home is where you are, not where you come from. Home is a place of comfort. However, at the other end of the spectrum, home could be a place of violence injury and pain. With a sound, an image, or a smell, you could come undone, break into pieces. And settling is, the, you know, is a good word for it. Um, um, if you come from Iran and experience war, you know, the revolution itself, uh, you know, a, you know, any image or sound that somehow takes you back there, uh, you're transformed you, know, you go someplace where you don't want to go. Um, now, um, of course, um, in between these two you know, ends of the spectrum, home is complicated. It is complicated. Um, now, let me go back to the homeland um, and sort of re remind you that Hamid uh, worked in Iran um, and taught in Iran from 1973 to 1978. And um, while um, um, he was there, uh, wrote uh, um, and published a uh, film in Mostanad, documentary film in Persian, a two-volume world history of nonfiction cinema. It was published in 1978. These books were used as textbooks in, you know, in universities. Um, although the original publisher is no longer around, these books are available in, print, in pirated or unauthorized prints in black market. Um, Mayam Sapperi in that video explained that, you know, how we can find uh, these books are still in circulation. And in fact, you know, uh, for those of you who don't know, um, uh, Iranians, you know, don't really abide by um, copyrights, you know, laws. And um, often, actually, they will reproduce an entire book, photocopy it in color, the way the book was, and you couldn't tell the difference between the one that you hold and the original one, and it might cost, you know, two or three dollars. Um, so anyway, um, that, that book is still in uh, circulation. Now, um, 
a whole generation of documentary filmmakers uh, and professional photographers uh, would readily submit that Hamid's teaching have greatly influenced them and informed their practices. Um, so in the video that we saw, uh, Pirus Galantari, who I believe was one of Hamid's students in Iran, um, said that prior to being introduced to Hamid's work, uh, they were all uh, they stuck on technique and form, and uh, with Hamid's teaching, they moved toward what he calls social photography, uh, in, in Persian. Um, now, his, the making of exact cultures um, has been translated into Persian, um, but has not found a publisher, uh, even as I see parts of it in circulation in Iran. Um, although publishers might say the reason is the waning influence of or importance of Los Angeles music or popular culture, no one can really rule out politics. In fact, I'm, you know, I'm suggesting that's uh, more like it. Um, the outrage pumped by uh, the right-wing media in Iran over Holy Spider, uh, the film that was screened in Cannes, Cannes Film Festival a few days ago, reflects authorities' ongoing anxieties over diasporic cultural productions. The first volume of uh, Social History of Iranian Cinema was translated under Hamid's direct supervision by Mahmoud Chahba and won the best translation cinema book award at the fifth annual cinema book awards in uh, Tehran in 2016. Um, I should also mention here, um, uh, I uh, nominated Hamid, uh, he doesn't know this, uh, um, uh, for a prestigious award in humanities in Iran. Uh, uh, so uh, Farabi uh, Award in Humanities, and um, I submitted a whole package. Um, they uh, took it seriously. I, I, it was actually a way for me to see if, if it's safe for Hamid to go to Iran for a visit. That was a way to find out. And it went uh, all the way up, and I got a phone call. They asked for, can you say more about this, more about that? And um, uh, eventually, uh, though, uh, I got a phone call. Um, and, it, you know, uh, that, that it, was, it had to be pulled uh, simply you know, reflects the sort of you know, the politics of time. You know, the, and they're still uh, really st you know, stuck on um, you know, uh, Hamid's work, you know, on exile and you know, you know, Los Angeles you know, and, um, and the like. Um, so uh, uh, that was my experience and, you know, and we also learned the process that probably is not safe for Hamid to go to Iran. Um, for now. Um, so, but for the younger generations, beyond film scholarship, Hamid's work is associated with cultural studies. Um, um, the Cultural Studies Reader, edited by Simon During, uh, was published in 1999. Uh, it included a contribution from Hamid, which is a reprint of the uh, chapter four of his book, The Making of Exiled Cultures. Um, that book was translated by Homi Ramoshizadeh, a faculty of University of Tehran, and was published in the same year, in 1999. Um, that translation is out of print, uh, and it did not include Hamid's chapter. Um, I think for the obvious reasons, you know. Um, however, um, it was uh, translated a second time, this time by Nimo Malik Mahmadi and Shahriar uh, Wafripur in 2003. That translation included Hamid's uh, contribution. Uh, as a reminder, this is Khatami's era. Um, so this happened, you know, basically at the height of, you know, uh, the reform movement during Khatami's, you know, presidency from 1997 to 2005. And so that, that work has been read. What is more, uh, the publisher of the second translation uh, was a publishing arm of the broadcasting entity in Iran, Padre uh, Sima. Um, the second edition of the second translation is published by Entesharate Elmi wa Farhangi, which used to be called Masase Entesharate Franklin. Um, Franklin Book Program, uh, in case you don't know, uh, uh, which according to Encyclopedia Ironica was an American nonprofit corporation 
seeking to aid development of indigenous book publishing in developing countries. Um, that basically you know, is the origin of that publisher. Um, um, I visited them actually in Masoud Kosari, a faculty of University of Tehran, was the, uh, was the uh, manager there. And um, um, I mentioned, you know, if they, we could translate, you know, some books. And then, you know, I mentioned Hamid's, you know, you know books. And they said, we'll get back to you, you know, back and forth. Um, so anyway, it's complicated. It's Iran. <laughs> um, um, now, it should be noted that the Ministry of Culture had, had a hand in bringing culture studies to Iran through sponsorship of such publications because they thought cultural studies could, could help them in cultural policy and cultural management, what in Farsi they called Mudiryat or Barnum Rizi Farangi. Um, think of Australian cultural studies and cultural policy debates um, on ACID. Oh, this is uh, basically Tony Bennett's work. Um, in Iran, it took a darker path actually. Um, ended up uh, contributing to the so-called cultural engineering discourse, Mansif um, Arhangi, um, in response to a sort of, uh, so that concept of cultural engineering was actually so popular, the Supreme Leader you know, actually picked it up, you know, and um, I was in a conference, uh, 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 a colleague from, a U UK educated colleague from, you know, uh, um, uh, Alama Tawata University came to me and said that uh, can that concept of cultural engineering be you know, used you know, uh, in the way Tony Bennett says in useful culture? Uh, and I said, no, no, no. And I told him, go read Hamid's work on instrumentalization of culture. Um, so, you know, home is complicated. Uh, now, beyond the formal mechanisms and authorized educational systems uh, in the form of public universities and the ever proliferating private universities in Iran, there's a sizable informal economy that supports informal film education uh, and film discourse. Uh, these entities, uh, which are not authorized or accredited, uh, go by different names. They might call themselves Cinematech, they might call, call themselves School of Art and Literature, um, you know, Masse uh, Farang, you know, Honari, uh, Cultural Institute, and the like. Um, interested individuals pay a fee to register for what's called, you know, a dore. Huh? It could be basically a series of lectures, uh, you know, uh, for four or five times. Um, and uh, around the series of thematic lectures by relatively um, well-known cultural critics or translators, such as, you know, Saleh Najafi, you know, Majid Islami, or Nabid uh, Pur Muhammad Reza. Um, these are individuals who, you know, teach us classes. Lectures could be, you know, on individual filmmakers. The last one I checked was very, very hot. I was told that the series on Fassbinder, you know, the German filmmaker. Um, or themes could be death, love, you know, film architecture. Um, I attended one of these. Um, uh, so I have a few of these things. Um, you, I, I, as, either as a guest or um, I request to interview the manager. Um, this is where you can see the rich film culture in Iran. In these spaces, you hear phrases, language, and concept that the younger generation use. It is clear they are reading Hamid Nafis's work because they, you know, actually throw out, you know, his language, you know, accented cinema, you know, and, and uh, other concepts. So uh, I, I attended one of these things. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a place, but basically during the day is an art gallery. At night it becomes, you know, um, a whole new different thing. And it is not uh, authorized, you know, they're not um, legal. Uh, so uh, after, you know, basically operating for a year or two, they, if someone discovers that that's, you know, something happening at night here, it shouldn't happen, be happening. Uh, I, I attended one of these things, it was on queer cinema. And uh, so then they dismantle that place and go find some other place. Um, um, so, um, so I started with um, home. I mean, I started with the home, house, home, homeland distinction. Um, but I have not said anything about my house. Uh, if you'd indulge me, uh, let me finish on a personal note about what Hamid's work has meant to me. 
Uh, when I was a kid growing up in the 1970s in Iran, um, I heard a name on television that piqued my interest. I don't know any of you know that. Uh, Reza Badi was the name. Uh, all, you know, um, Hamid would know that. If you ever saw the American TV series Mission Impossible on Iranian television, you would know what I'm talking about. Uh, the opening credits would include a single you know, announcement. Um, there was no other, you, know, you just saw the credits you know, roll, but, um, but they made a point of saying, directed by Reza Badi. I mean, just it was dramatic, you know. Kargadan um, Reza Badi. Um, in my imagination, you know, as a kid, I thought, I'm going to find out who this fellow is. Um, you know, it was just, you know, uh, interesting. I started buying magazines with words, you know, with the word film or cinema in their titles. I actually have a few issues of, you know, Tamasha, which Hamid, you know, used to uh, write in there. Um, I kept buying these magazines um, until 1985 when I came to the U.S. to go to college. Um, anyway, I did not find anything about Reza Badi in all of those magazines, um, but I started seeing another name, and that name was Hamid Nafisi. Uh, you know, for whatever reason, it stuck with me. It was a kind of exotic to me because, you know, I learned especially that, you know, now he's in the U.S., you know, and as a professor, he's teaching, you know. Um, now, in my room, on the second floor of my house, you know, my parents' house, I created my own space, posters on the walls, you know, my stereo, my music, uh, specially made cabinet uh, for my magazines, you know, and the stereo, you know. I asked one of my father's cousins, who was a furniture maker, Mo Furushi, you know, to make that for me because, you know, I thought that was cool. Uh, anyway, um, in the U.S., when I got here, you know, I was homesick for the first year. And for reasons that I don't think I understood at the time, I asked my family to buying those magazines and um, send them to me. They bind them in three volumes, and uh, that's the only thing I asked for. You know, I didn't know why. Anyway, in retrospect, you know, I think uh, I was trying to recreate my room by bringing an object that was, you know, meaningful to me. So we mark and shape space with objects. I was making my home in my new place. Now, going back to the example of the child um, who sang, you know, that song is about making a space, marking a space, creating a milieu. A milieu, uh, the Luzon Gotari would say, is a block of space time constituted by the periodic repetition of the component. Home is made, remade, is re-territorialization. So my guess is that those magazines allowed me to create a milieu. Uh, and Hamid's name or work was a part of it. Um, this is what I meant by being at home with Nafis's work. Um, by the way, I came to the U.S. much like most Iranian parents, at least of my generation. You're supposed to become either you know an engineer or you go to medical school. Anything else is a failure. <laughs> so um, <laughs> they asked me, you know, why are you why do you want these magazines? You know, I said I don't know. I just want them because I had fun reading them. Um, so the first year I was here, I was like, taking all these you know gen ed classes. I would always end up you know in the film section of the library, and my brother was here. My brother would come and say. You have a chemistry test tomorrow, you know, you have, you know, um, anyway, um, I, uh, so I think, you know, it's your fault, Hamid, that, you know, I ended up, uh, I, in fact, my parents might blame you for me not being a doctor. <laughs> um, so anyway, I just want to um, say thank you, Hamid, for your work, for the inspiration, and for making it possible for me to carry Shiraz with me to the States. We love you, Ustad. By the way, I should also add, so when we say um, Hamid has influenced us in so many ways, uh, the, fir I, the first time I found out the making room for television 
And private screenings was reading one of Hamid's work that, that led me to your work. So, um, you know, uh, actual connections. Thank you. I'll invite you to my